Frank. Frank. Frank, come on, man. Can I the be frank? It's all about capturing all real, authentic, unedited I conversation. I worked for mm -hmm. and worked for various different companies. Is that I was always conscious as a woman in business mm -hmm. that there were differences. I, I can't tell you how often I came across women who wouldn't actually go for the next job. Still do. I have an amazing friend who's wrestling at the moment, going for a top job, and she's more than qualified to do it. You know, and I would often be the only woman sitting in a, a meeting in the boardroom and. I would find it very difficult to speak, you know, because mm. there's nine or ten men around the table. And um, so I was constantly reminded that it's just different, mm -hmm. intuitively, common sense wise. But but I don't know why it was different. And there's a lot of geeky behavioral studies that will tell me, you know, that when you do various pieces of research, Hewlett Packard did one of the big ones that said, you know, it, in terms of being ready for the job, 60 percent of women will not throw their hat in the ring, even though they're 100 percent ready for the job, whereas mm -hmm. men can only be partially prepared for a job and they'll say, sure, I'll wing it. And mm -hmm. uh, I was conscious of all these studies. So about two or three years ago, I said, the geek in me, constantly looking for research, I need science always to back up things. Um, I asked about uh, 13 or 14 people to work with me and we did what's called a media analysis, a fancy word, but really we just did a critique of all of the research that had been published and only we only took the robust research so mm -hmm. having published peer-reviewed journals I'm I'm very good at separating the wheat from the chaff the subjective ones the small-scale studies the organizationally driven or the sponsor driven studies so we just separated out the ones that you could actually credibly rely upon in terms mm -hmm. of a very small amount by the way the whole science of the differences between women and man, men and, and uh, just throwing out the window Venus and Mars concepts. Um, yeah, they're actually it's quite a, a small area of study and it's quite new. And for every week you read about confidence holding women back, you read another one that says confidence is not an issue for women. So it's it's often very difficult to to find that robust, reliable research. So from this small pile, we ended up um, really finding only four differences between women and men, the real differences. And I and these four differences, I would say are particularly pertinent to the, to the working life or, okay. or how you live your life, although you'll recognize them in your personal life. Yeah. Every time I talk to men, I say, that's why she does that. So, um, right. And although I'm describing them as things that hold women back, they're only negatives because, unfortunately, workplaces don't often recognize these things yeah. as things that are valuable. So this is in the kind of idea of we say get to the top of businesses. Is it? Is it? Is it linked to that? Yes, and in, in so if you, in our lifetime, we often talk about women and men being different. Spatial yeah. awareness. I mean, I happen to be a terrible person at knowing directions. I have about four sat navs in my car. So, <laughs> you know, I think you could either say my whole PhD was how we retrieve information and retain it. And mm -hmm. I remember doing this one study where um, we found that men. If they didn't know their way in a particular town, they would um, do anything other than stop at a bus stop and say, can you tell me how to get there? And, <laughs> and women, the first thing they'll do is pull in and say, can you tell me how to get yeah. there? So men and women are different in terms of how they retrieve information, how they... Um, a colleague of Richard's at the BBC did a great laboratory study where he put a group of men and a group of women in a room and he said there are four topics off the table. I think it was sports, cars, salary um, or employment and there was one other it wasn't sex now i know that um and and the women within five seconds were all chatting about family life and what you're wearing and you're wearing and everything else and the men stood around looking at each other couldn't, <laughs> couldn't oh, engage. That's, really, really, that's just totally not fair <laughs> just couldn't engage it's, it's true but but the science is actually robust in terms of these four areas i think outside of that you will mm -hmm. find that they're all so two of them are in the brain so if you put the brains of women and men next to each other and you had the best neuroscientists neurophysicists in the room they wouldn't be able to tell the difference whereas okay. alike more alike than we are different save for two areas and one is um called the worry ward center of the brain so it's the anterior cingulate Right. And it's slightly more enlarged and more developed in women than it is in men. It goes back to the hunter-gatherer era. 
Nipper? No. <laughs> no. Uh, no, but, <laughs> but not, not dissimilar. So it, it does. It, so Mother Nature has a way over time of getting rid of things that we don't need. So, mm. you know, lots of people, 30% of people are born without wisdom teeth now because we don't need the expense and the pain of getting rid of them. We don't use them anymore. Sadly, this is one particular area of the brain that women continue to use. So it was developed in the hunter-gatherer period when the women went on the high ground to scan the horizon for danger while the men went out to hunt. Mm. And it has this unique ability in women to be able to look to the future and to see things that might go wrong. Mm-hmm. really really important internal danger radar which women uniquely have and in in our personal lives for instance you often find women are probably unique in doing lists of pros and cons it's a it's mm-hmm. a woman's thing to do so if you say you know will you go for that job the woman will say what happens if it goes wrong what happens if i can't pick up the children what happens if i'm terrible at it what happens if my colleagues laugh if i don't get the job so she's constantly weighing up What could go wrong if she makes that particular decision? Mm -hmm. Drives men crazy. Because if they say, let's go on holiday to such and such, the woman will often start looking at all the pros and cons of doing that. What could go wrong? What could be right? And it's just a way that women have of analysing things in the future. Mm. which It's a risk management sort of thing, isn't it? Yeah. Perfect. So in our workplaces, it's not always a skill that's valued. I would be around the boardroom table. Somebody would suggest that we open a new plant in Scandinavia. The chairman's all for it. The whole room is buzzed up about it. And I'm the only Egypt saying, hang on a minute. Can we just have a look as to whether that's the right location? Has it got the right flavor for it? So, you know, constantly the guys are saying, you're wrecking our buzz. You know, why are you trying to find the downside to everything? And I'd say, I'm not trying to find the downside. I'm actually just analysing things to make sure that we've looked at the risk and balanced it. No surprise that in areas where that's highly valued, women do really well. So almost all women who get to the top in uh, corporate life do through the finance route. Mm -hmm. So you'll find, in fact, the association that manages accountants in Ireland is is now over 50% women. So women do really well in financial jobs where you're virtually required to pour a cold water on an idea that's your Mm. job really is to say to the chairman and the ceo yeah have you thought of this it's a risk analysis job um areas like law you know the amount of women who are now senior partners and leading almost every senior legal job in ireland is taken by a woman at the moment Mm. so where you are required to do that level of analysis and look for the dangers and the possibilities women do phenomenally well not always valued in corporate life and sometimes in their personal life it can actually be one of those things that creates a rift between women and men. The second area of the brain, which is number two on our fourth, uh, is is called the rumination center. It's the amygdala. So uh, this Jesus, you really like, got into it. This sounds like a very uh, nerdy thing to say, mm-hmm. but in women, the amygdala lights up more readily to negative stimuli. So, in other words, if something bad happens to a woman, she tends to dwell on it far longer than a man would. So maybe, you know, if you're in a boardroom situation and somebody says something, a woman will often analyse that from every single angle to see where the negative is in it. Um, She might dwell on it and sleep on it. I I often tweet out and say, rumination, I'd have 99 less problems without you, because I am one person who ruminates a lot on things that go wrong. I have a guy who's mentoring a woman at the moment, both in senior positions, and it's driving him crazy that she's still going on about something that happened about four months previously that she's never had resolution Mm -hmm. on in the workplace. And he said, why didn't she move on? Like, I mean, dust yourself down, go and have a glass of water, move on. Everybody's forgotten that, whereas the woman hasn't forgotten it. Now, in, in our personal lives, that is something that drives me particularly crazy that I sometimes find myself in a personal situation where somebody will say something not the equivalent of you know I love that outfit on you I've always loved it and then I'm going did I wear it too often (laughs) somebody you know right but but something maybe a little bit more you know serious about what they might say but in a work situation the reason why it's incredibly valuable is that although I say that we all learn from failure men in my experience don't often want to learn from failure yeah when something goes wrong they're that's done, let's move on. And again, I was often the lone woman saying, let's go back over that. Why did that go wrong? Why did we Do you know, lose it's almost that? survival instincts that what you're talking as well. Yeah. It's like if you go down a road and you got attacked by a wolf, you're going to approach that differently the next time. Exactly. Yeah. And, and learning from that is the most important thing. And then, so, but in corporate life, men usually, and I, you know, my experience uniquely has always been <clears throat> the woman with the men, um, 
they they often just want to forget it. They you know that campaign went wrong, Nora. Stop talking about it. We all know why it went wrong. No need to chat about it. Let's move on. I want to go back and rake over the coals and decide how it's gone wrong. Mm -hmm. What was wrong? I'm not doing it to blame anybody. I just have to learn from it by looking back over it. So what women are uniquely capable of is often going back over things that go wrong and analysing it. But that's not also values in corporate life. And... Um, in other words, you, the person is saying, well, we, did, we tried that already and it didn't work. Yeah, but you'll never learn from it if you don't go back and actually yeah. look at it from every angle. So when Christine, when Christian Lagarde said, the head of the IMF, you know, it would be better if we had more Lehman sisters than Lehman brothers. Mm. What she meant by that is that risk analysis yeah. and the unique ability both to learn from things that go wrong and to look at things in the future and, and weigh up the pros and cons of what could go right. There's a very good friend of mine, Halla thomas Dotter, who stood for president of Iceland last year and she ran the only bank in Iceland that survived that big fall, the recession, mm -hmm. called Sisters Capital. And she said she did it through uh, using feminine values. That's her description of the word. But actually it was this particular area of risk analysis and and this learning from things that don't go right that she was talking about. Those two things, I think when I talk about it, and I always talk in a corporate world, I talked about men and women. There's no point in women knowing this and men not knowing that because yeah. the reality for most women is that men will be mentoring them. Um, the reality for most men is they're working in teams with women and in the future, more and more of them will be working with women bosses. So mm -hmm. we need to understand why we have different behaviors and value them. The third area is a very obvious one, but not often recognized, um, sometimes disparaged, is that the fuel that you run on and the fuel I run on is totally different. So you have 10 times more testosterone than I do. Mm -hmm. And testosterone as a hormone is, um, is a winning competitive hormone and it encourages you to want to win and to want to get to the top. And in fact, it encourages conflict. So mm -hmm. when they trace the saliva of young bucks on the stock exchange in London, they realize that on days that testosterone is up, they make riskier trades. And worse, if they get a bonus for the riskier trade, they get a 20% hit on their testosterone. So they charted one guy who went through a 21 day testosterone roller coaster before he finally fell off the cliff and burned out. So, so testosterone in the work environment is often the guy who's the lone wolf, who goes out on his own, who's competitive with his colleagues, doesn't want to be a team player. And, and in fact, CEOs tend to love those kind of people. They mm. love the go-getter, the one that's always going to go for the top. Yeah. Women being fueled by estrogen primarily, um, which is a bonding, team-building um, hormone. Great when you've got a big pack of children that you want to get on well together, and it tends to, it tends to encourage conflict avoidance. So in in my era of corporate life and in the future, teamwork is everything. Working together as teams rather than in hierarchies is how things are done. Balanced teams, people actually bonding and trying to achieve mm -hmm. something as a common aim. But in my corporate life, that's not the person who gets the big bucks. The person who gets the big bucks is the one who's given the big commission and the targets, who's the lone wolf who gets to the top, not the woman who's achieved all the project management that has achieved the environment for him to do that. Yeah. So, so it's an incredibly important skill, um, not always valued financially. And in fact, if you're great at team building, sometimes the perception is you could never then be the boss because you're not going to be the person. You know, if you say, I'm always the one on the outside saying, why does Ernst & Young never have enough woman, women in their, um, in their Young Entrepreneur Program? Why is it that most business awards you see a sea of men and one lone woman there as a token? Mm. Which the organizers will say, we just don't get them applying. And I will say back to them, because women naturally will not put themselves forward for an award. Mm -hmm. If I go to a woman and say, I want to, we run the Women of the Year Awards, I want to give it, no, it's for my team. She will make a speech about how she's one person in a whole group that achieved something. Mm -hmm. Laudable as that is, and the truth, it never gives the award. You know, you, ne you never say, okay, well, I'm going to give it to her. Because the guy is quite happy, even though there might be 10 people Me, 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 me. You're quite right. I am the genius. Yeah, I'm <laughs> so, great. <laughs> then the fourth one is um, is an interesting one because they're called the elementary studies. Right. There's a very great um, organization of psychologist Carl, Carl Dweck, who you may know, and uh, she perfected this idea, but many others have also uh, done research into it. So you could raise your son and your daughter exactly the same to the age of four and then send them off to school. And 
And when they go into primary school, um, the boys are running like wild animals down the corridor, knocking lumps off each other. Mm -hmm. And the girls, who, by the way, at that age, are more socially adept and have finer communication skills. You have young children, you must see it. Mm -hmm. So girls can sit and actually, you know, quietly do Talk something. To you. Yeah. Whereas my boy would have a hammer and yeah. you know, be bashing it's him. Fun, so. It's totally different. Yeah. When you see, you see it at a young age, the difference is phenomenal. Yeah. So when they went into school, the girls actually get rewarded for being you know, quiet and disciplined and doing their homework, and that's what they learn how to do. Often the boys start to get rewarded by scoring the goal, giving the mm. guy a punch, you know, acting like the maggot. And, you know, so they end up having reward systems from a very young age that are quite different. Okay. Carol Dweck often said, if, um, if life was one long school report, girls would be the undisputed rulers of the world because... What we see in society now is girls are doing much better in education. Mm. They're far better than the boys now coming out with higher third level education results. It's when they go in the workplace that things start to look markedly different for them. So okay. in the school environment, they're, they love the idea of neatness and homework and the discipline of all of that. Um, but obviously what I'm talking about in terms of Planet Woman is about the corporate environment where you know, even if you have Mary and John going in at the age of 22 with the same graduate results um, going into a bank, John is 10 times more likely to get to the elusive corner office in the sky and she's twice as likely to have left. And do people really want that nowadays? Like the idea now of, of um, empowering women to just set up more businesses that don't have to put up with that crap, is that not a, a good aim? You know, that idea that there's more and more entrepreneurs that are women founders. But, but both is true. I think that um, there are a lot of women in the professions. Um, there are a lot of women who want to work in an environment where they might want to, for all sorts of reasons, whether they're teachers or nurses or doctors or, or they're accountants or they want to work in technology, that they want to work in a corporate environment. So it should mm. be available for them. And it's not. So if, if I was to say, which I often say to myself, which is true, I can't change society. There are all sorts of issues around childcare, familial issues that um, you know we're still struggling with equality of pay there's all sorts of issues that I cannot tick the box on I, I physically can't change it yeah. the culture of an organization um, I can't change but if it's the case that the woman is holding herself back which is true in some regards what I can do is help her to overcome that yeah I can actually planet woman is um, through a digital learning platform I've tried to build on those four differences to show women in a very practical sense, um, you know, how do you have the confidence to speak up in a meeting? You know, women in behavioural terms, they tend to apologise for things that they've never done. They tend to believe they're going to do worse in tests than they do. They tend to underestimate their own abilities, so therefore they don't go for the job. These are more prevalent in, these traits are more prevalent in women than men. Oh, 100%. Yeah, I'd yeah. say in women, it's never competence. It's definitely confidence. It's 100% okay. the case. So most of what I've been trying to do is aimed at either young women in their 20s trying to find the way in corporate life before they get lost, or maybe women going back into the workplace who struggle with the same thing. Even mm. if they ended up leaving on a high and they go off and have children and they're, they're gone from the workplace for 10 years, they, they struggle with that confidence going back into the workplace. Mm -hmm. And the other one is, the other one I see a lot of is, is women who've done one thing all their lives and maybe they took, the couple might have made a decision that she stays doing part-time job for the time while the children are growing and she now wants a career swerve. So yeah. she's in her 40s or late 30s and out of the blue she's, I want to do something totally different. My life has passed me by, mm. I want to do something, which is absolutely... Uh, a laudable aim. So I think <clears throat> the issues for me are, uh, if you boil down to all those behavioural studies, they do almost always involve confidence. Um, <laughs> Hi, if you like the conversation that I just had and you'd like more, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you. Frank. Frank, Frank. 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 Fr